What is up guys, SkyFPV here, and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a review and uh, just kind of giving my thoughts on this module and uh, how it's been treating me and my goal here is going to be to make sure that you make the most informed purchasing decision uh, when you are trying to figure out if you want to buy this or not. And uh, I've gotten kind of a unique experience with it uh, because it's had a little bit of controversy over uh, how well it works and how well it works for different setups. So let's dig into it. Alright, so uh, where to even start? So this module claims to be significantly better than a lot of the other modules out there on the market, aside from uh, the obvious one, which is Clearview. And it's kind of made the rounds that this is supposed to be uh, using kind of a similar technology to Clearview. And it's that whole image fusion. So I've done a little bit of research uh, surrounding you know, how that might work. And uh, there are a few things that tipped me off to why I think that this works the way it does. But to understand why this is a better module in theory than all the other modules on the market, uh, we have to understand a little bit about analog uh, signals for video uh, sig specifically. So to understand, basically when your goggles are drawing an image, they're going to start at the top left, and they're going to start drawing like the pixels. You've got a signal, and it's going up and down and telling you what should you know, be drawn there. And then at the end, it's going to do what's called a uh, horizontal sync pulse. And that's basically just the voltage going low or the signal going low and saying, okay, we're at the end of the line. Go ahead and start drawing the next line. Now, what's interesting is in our scenario, sometimes that pulse gets missed. And if that pulse gets missed, that's when you get the tearing, you get scrolling, you get all the really, really bad types of breakup. It's not quite the same as the noise you get during the line. It's when the image is no longer a square image. That's what happens when you, when you miss those pulses. So something that this module does is it ensures that you always have one of those pulses. And that's the reason for the whole locking thing. Basically, the lock is just it syncing an internal timer. And keep in mind, this is all basically my theory on how this works. I have not talked to Immersion about how this works, or Clearview for that matter, but I suspect they both work in this way. Uh, so basically what's happening is it's synchronizing an internal timer with uh, those sync pulses or you know something, some signal, some aspect of the signal that your camera's putting out. And uh, if that sync pulse gets missed... Then the goggle, or then the module is going to just tell the goggles, "Hey, there's a sync pulse here. I know it's there. You can just trust me that it's there." And the goggles will say, "Okay," and they start drawing the next line. And that's always going to be right as long as those two timers are pretty close in sync. And uh, so that's basically the one of the ideas about how Clearview works and about uh, how Rapid Fire works. Now, there's another thing that they're doing too. Most uh, modules right now are s selecting the antenna based on the RSSI value. And the problem with that is that reading an RSSI takes a little bit of time. In fact, by the time you realize that this antenna is getting better signal than this antenna, it's actually too late. The user has already seen tearing and just bad signal in general. And even if you select the one with the best signal, without that automatic sync insertion, um, you're still going to see really jacked up, you're still going to get scrolling, you're still going to get all sorts of badness. And so the way that this solves that problem is, I believe it's using the sync pulse, it may be using something else about the signal, um, but if this is kind of a you know high level of what I think it's doing, is if the sync, if the sync pulse on this antenna arrives before the sync pulse on this antenna, it may select this antenna because it knows that it got the signal that took the shortest path. And uh, that's one way that you could, in theory, um, select which antenna to draw each given line. So it's possible that they're, they're using th that method to make sure that each line is the best possible line of video that you could select, in theory. I think that's how these are working.
So anyway, how does that work in practice? Because that's a totally different thing. And there's been some uh, information going around that, and in fact, uh, ImmersionRC has put out a spreadsheet talking about this. I'll have the link in the description. But they have a spreadsheet talking about cameras that are not compatible. And uh, all of this analog stuff that I'm talking about, that's why specific cameras are not compatible. And the reason is because they're actually not to spec. They're not, you know, giving the, the specified uh, signal levels that are required for NTSC and PAL signals. So it's not this module's fault per se that these cameras are not working and that some of these OSDs are not working. So I just so happen to have all of my racers set up with the exact board that does not work and the exact camera that also does not work. And so I was really disappointed when I got this and, you know, experienced, well, let me show you. So. Here's a race I was at last weekend, and uh, let me go ahead and make this bigger for you guys. We're going to start frame stepping here and seeing what it looks like when you have a camera that's out of spec, and you have the rapid fire trying to lock onto that camera. And you'll see it is doing its job in that it's, it's, you can see that it's keeping these sync pulses pretty close to the edge, but it's not quite sure. So it's doing a decent job of keeping the image relatively square, but it just can't quite figure out where we are on that frame or where exactly the frame is ending and uh, you know that's 100% the camera's fault and the OSD's fault and you can see at this point I've decided this is not really flyable so I'm going to uh, just land it because this is exactly what I was seeing on the gog on my goggles and so it does get you know a sink back but by that point it's too late I'm down this is not going to work. So this was my first experience, and I was pretty upset. Um, so I started perusing Facebook and got onto the Immersion RC, um, you know, community page or whatever it's called, and uh, they had a uh, firmware version that you could update and test. And I'll have a link to that also below in the description. So I went and I got the new firmware on there, and uh, this was my experience. Uh, with that. So they, they basically added a new mode and I think they're going to call it like compatibility mode and it's going to try to uh, work a little bit better on cameras and OSDs that are out of spec and poorly filtered. So this is a race uh, on compatibility mode and I actually raced on this mode all day long and it was absolutely awesome. This is what I expected when I purchased the product and the fact that they were so quick about getting the firmware update out it was out uh, pretty much when I received my module. It was just a matter of me finding the information. So this is me trying to disseminate some of that information for you guys. So let's go ahead and get to the part where we're actually flying. And you can see here that video is pretty darn good. Uh, some things to note. My antenna placement is really not great. And uh, there was, I had my cell phone in my pocket. Um, there's six other pilots up. We're on 25 milliwatts, and the field RF is actually pretty good here. The only problem was that we did have a timing system running off Wi-Fi, which I think was putting out a little bit of noise. But really, this video stays flyable for the entirety, like 100% of the flight. Every single frame is flyable. And what's more important is I won't put you through the pain of it here, but I actually frame-stepped through every single frame of the video and I used this timer right here, or not that timer, this timer, and made sure that it had all 30 frames that it should have had. And in fact, I didn't miss a single frame from the DVR. It captured every single frame. And you can see there I'm done. Uh, and I, I guess I can disclaimer, it was probably missing frames when the quad went down, but that's not really, that's negligible. Uh, so let's go ahead and find some spots of breakup and talk about them a little bit. It's actually difficult for me to find some examples for you because my video was awesome. And I really never saw any tearing of the image or any scrolling. Oh, there we go. There's a little blip. And we're going right by that timer I was talking about. So here you can see the really great part about this type of breakup is the image is pretty much perfectly square. You can't see any of that black creeping into the screen. That's when you know that your image is about to get really, really, really bad. 
And uh, that just never happens during this flight. And that's even in compatibility mode, when it's not getting the full uh, power that this module has. Um, so ultimately, I have to say, based off of this, I am just, I'm absolutely stoked for this. If you are going to a field and you want to fly with six or eight other people, um, as long as nobody's completely blowing you out or landing their quad right in front of you, this is going to give you exactly what you expect. Like, it, it's a whole other level of, of flying FPV. It's FPV how you expect it to be. And it, um, I'm not going to say it just works. Not yet, because they haven't worked out all of the bugs. But uh, they're doing a really good job of releasing firmware to people and communicating with their uh, customers. And that's really something that encourages me about a company. And uh, I'm just so pleased with this purchase because of that, because they're actually supporting their product and they're being transparent about, you know, instead of working super hard to just protect their secret sauce, um, they're just, they're concerned about the consumers getting what they paid for. And I believe that this is absolutely 100% worth every dollar that I spent on it. In fact, I, I would spend more on this than it, uh, than it, you know, retails for. So I'm very happy with this purchase. I think uh, if you're not satisfied with compatibility mode, which in my opinion is still miles ahead of any other module on the market, other than maybe the Clearview, um, which has its own issues, um, I, th I think it's better than, than all the other modules. Even legacy mode is on par with every other module. So you won't see any of those uh, tearing issues or anything like that in legacy mode, but you also don't get all the fanciness that I described earlier. So, yeah, uh, I hope that this informs some people. I hope it uh, makes it easier for them to make a purchasing decision that they're happy with. I'm certainly happy with purchasing this module, and I, I would recommend it to pretty much every pilot out there. And so I hope that you get some value out of this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and uh, hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I'm trying to uh, grow the channel a little bit and uh, get more quality content out for you guys. So uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.